Hi everyone. Um, so what we have, uh, this three has arrived, um, and I have attached the Sesto sensor to it. This is the three 120 from Skywatcher. And in the background here, we you can see I've got um, my old Star Travel, um, which, uh, although it's the same aperture, they're completely tel different telescopes, um, and the, the focuser that um, I have attached to this three is completely different from the Star Travel. Um, so what I'm first going to do is uh, have a look at star travel um, and give you a bit of an explanation of the difficulties I've had um, with using it. Um, so it's a standard uh, star travel 120 OTA uh, and what you'll find is on this side I've attached um, the, the Skywatcher um, focus uh, motor um, which uh, can be controlled um, in two different ways really. Um, first is with a hand controller um, and this takes a 9 volt battery um, or uh, if you want to remotely control it without even um, being next to the telescope um, there's the uh, high tech Astro DC Focus V2 controller. Uh, I won't demo, demo this but um, just show you that uh, it does actually control the focuser. Um, this would go into the, this end could easily, just as easily go into here. You power this on 12 volts and connect a USB uh, to it, and then there's a driver that uh, allows you to remotely focus. Um, so if we were to just connect this in. Um, hopefully the battery works. There's a fast, slow on the hand controller um, and then you can focus in or focus out. Um, and I see that if I focus one direction the wheel is turning and then I can focus the other direction and the wheel turns. Um, however, uh, this is a DC motor um, and what that means is, as, as I've mentioned before in other videos, um, is that if you are focusing in and out, and obviously on, at this end you're going to have an imaging train, a whole set of cameras, a, possibly a filter wheel, an OAG, a fair amount of weight, and it's going to be pulling down on a focuser. So when you focus um, in that direction, um, you're going to, it's, it's going to go faster um, than if you focus up because it's pulling, pulling the weight of the imaging train up. Um, and the issue with that is that because it's a DC motor, um, it means that when you um, focus in one direction, the number of steps is is um, just an estimate of the amount of time um, that you perform that that operation. So all your autofocus routines that are out there, right, the various programs, K stars and others, um, do not account for that. Um, they assume you have an absolute focuser and that if you go 5,000 steps in one direction that you go in that uh, in that direction. You'll also note that the, the focus, uh, focuser on the Star Travel looks pretty cheap. Um, you've got um, just a single wheel. You would have another wheel on this side but you haven't got any fine tuned um, focusing um, that you're able to achieve uh, with. And of course this is an achromatic scope. Um, means it's got a single lens about here where the juice strap is um, and then there's, uh, the, you've got the focuser to, to move with, with, to, to that focus point um, on your eyepiece or on your camera, camera sensor. Um, so let's have a look now at the Esprit. It's a different thing. <sighs> this was ordered in August. It's now nearing uh, to December. We're in late late November. Um, it it feels a lot bigger. It's the same aperture, um, but it just feels a lot bigger and it's a lot heavier. Um, it uh, comes with um, on the focuser side. By default, it's got these attached, um, and in order to attach the Sesto Senso, you would need to. Um, remove these. Uh, it's quite easy. There's a little grub screw on this microfocuser that you can get out with a hex key. 
um, and then you have to remove the course focuser, um, which is slightly more uh, interesting as to how, how to do it. Um, what I found out is that there's, there's, it's got this rubber membrane um, for um, essentially getting the grip uh, when you're doing focusing. Um, and you, that rubber membrane has to be removed in order to reveal the grub screw um, that will loosen this um, from, 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 the, from the focusing shaft. It's a much more expensive uh, looking focuser um, and it is also uh, graduated. Let's see if I can uh, just move this camera so you can see a bit more. Uh, you can see it's graduated there, um, and I wonder if I can quickly demonstrate something with the Sesto sensor because it's completely different. It's um, it's a stepper motor, um, and that means that um, if you go in one direction or in the other direction, um, it will, and you tell it to go five thousand steps, it will always go that five thousand steps. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just move this back to zero. Um, the other thing to note is uh, most astronomy kit comes with a 2.1 centre positive um, connector um, and it's 12 volts also. And this is, I believe, powered in and is supplying that. The Sesto sensor is 2.5 millimeter, so you need a little adapter if you're going to use one of these. So we power it up. Um, it's got Wi-Fi, um, so we can just see it's got a red LED on the Wi-Fi, so I'm just going to connect to it on my phone. Um, connections, Wi-Fi, Sesto Sensor. So it connects, you'll have to set it up. Uh, so it works as a, as a standalone access point, so you don't have internet access. So on your phone, you may need to set it up so that it still connects to a network, um, even if it detects that the, the network it's connected to doesn't provide internet access. Maybe a, a setting in your advanced settings. Uh, and then you can just go to a web page, which by default is um, on the IP address 192.168.4.1. And uh, this is what you see, it's a, a web interface. Um, and what we can first do is just go to calibration. Uh, because it's like the focuser goes on the right, because that's where the, um, uh, that's where the micro focuser is, that you need to attach this to the micro focuser. You have to turn on, let's a reverse, reverse um, motor um, and then you just set the zero position we're at the zero position I've already done the calibration you essentially well, we've set the zero position um, so now we go back to the home page um, and what I can do is go to advanced settings load the Esprit profile Um, so there are a few things here. There's a hold current um, which has to be set for the Esprit, otherwise um, it's possible that your uh, focuser will slip. Um, and then you've got um, an acceleration run and deceleration settings, um, which I'm just going to lower here to two, um, which I thought I'd done before. Let's just load that profile again. That's interesting. Hold. Bring down the acceleration, run and deceleration. Try and save that again. Okay. Right, save. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just enter a value to go to. 
Um, on the Esprit, the Sesso Senso will go between somewhere around zero to 90,000 steps. So let's go to um, 25,000 steps. Point and go. And you see um, it's moving the focus around. And we'll just do a quick test to show you that the, the, the idea of the thing. So that's gone to just about exactly. Um, I could just see the, the two centimeter demarcation. Um, so now let's go to, let's say, 55,000 steps. Move that cable out of the way, so not to, to avoid that. And it says it's at 55. And that's showing at um, 46 uh, millimeters. So let's go back now to 25,000. And as I say, it, because it's a stepper motor, it should be exactly where it was um, on that two centimeter marker. So let's just do that. It goes back in the other direction. And take my word for it, it's exactly where it was. Um, so now we'll just put it back to the zero position. And it should just stop at zero. Yeah, I mean it didn't it didn't hit. <laughs> it didn't go any further than it needed to. It wasn't like going against it. Um, the nice thing about the Sesto Senso is that when you do power it off, um, and this is uh, something that the other focuses that uh, you may come across um, don't necessarily do um, or have the feature of, when this is powered off, uh, you can now manually focus. Um, there's no need to remove the um, autofocuser or have to or have to use the, the autofocuser in order to achieve focus. Although sometimes it's quite nice to be able to do it on your phone if you are doing visual astronomy, um, there is an up down on, on the phone and you don't actually have to touch the telescope or change off, um, you know, uh, uh, potentially move the telescope by trying to focus if you're working at a really high magnification and obviously that's not something that you'd want to, to do. Um, some things to note, you will notice is this one says it's ED100. Um, so. I bought this from um, during the coronavirus pandemic um, and I suspect that uh, because I placed the order in August and as I mentioned it's almost December, it's taken so long. Um, I imagine that at the factory they um, took a look and found that they didn't either didn't have the stickers or they didn't have the, the focuses that were prepped for the Esprit 120. Um, and so I seem to have the focuser for uh, an Esprit 100, um, but um, I am told um, uh, that they are, in fact, uh, equivalently uh, the same. Um, so that's the focuser. All works really fine. Um, sturdy uh, tube rings, metal, um, a, a nice Losman DD plate. Um, this looks to be like an F5, but it isn't. It says it's an F5, but that, <coughs> excuse me, the F5.5 is, um, is the Esprit 100. This is an F7, um, and that is because the uh, the lens is actually up here, um, and this G shield is retractable. So we'll just uh, show how we can get that retracted. There's two screws here. At which point you can pull that out, pull that out, pull G shield out to, as far as it goes. It does tell. So it seemed to <laughs> stop recording halfway through there. Um, I was just going to show you retracting the, the G shield, um, and uh, yeah, it kind of just um, it stopped. I need to remember not to uh, when I pick this up, not to pick it up by the focus. It needs to be done by the tube. It's a difficult thing to get used to. Um, 
But yeah, it just retracts like that. It's only got two screws here. I would prefer extra ones. Um, I'm assuming that it's, uh, it's using like a, a, a similar um, mechanism. It's not just banging the screws into the um, into the, uh, the into the tube itself. Um, and then we can have a look. Um, and that's the apochromatic lenses, um, and you can see, if you can see, pretty much uh, dust free, and some markings there. Triplet, ED, Apo. Um, so yeah, I said I'd like... Um, <laughs> I'd like three screws on there, ideally, but it, it comes with two, um, and it seems okay. Um, so we need to move that back. So it has a lens cap, which is metal. Um, apologies if, I, if this was on the uh, other part of the video, I had to interrupt because my webcam stopped working. Um, but so uh, yeah, it's metal. Um, so I suppose, is that a good thing? Um, I suppose it's more sturdy and it feels, feels better. But um, if you do drop this and it does bend, you won't be able to fit it back onto the tube without um, getting the pair of pliers and trying to reshape it again um, whereas you wouldn't have the problem with a lighter um, plastic one uh, and phew, you could just get a replacement plastic one for a very small amount whereas a replacement one of these is going to be somewhat more costly um, talking like you know, uh, tens of pounds rather than five pounds for a plastic one we just put that back on Everything fits snugly with the Asbury. Um, it's always a tight fit, um, but uh, it all seems pretty well. Right, um, so what I'm gonna try now do is slice two videos together. So uh, you'll probably, well, you've already seen it if you've, if you've been looking at the video through, um, that um, essentially, uh, yeah, had some uh, webcam issues during uh, the initial recording. So we'll try and splice them together and um, hopefully it'll be a good video, so, yeah. Thank you for watching.